Hello people and welcome to my new video. Today I will be making a leather thimble. The first thing you need is a piece of leather that is wider than your finger. Just a note, you should never use scissors to cut leather because they will become blunt. I am using a scrap piece of leather that I had lying around. You will need two equal size pieces. As you can see, one of my pieces is already almost the correct shape. Next, you can choose your weapon. Here I am using a scalpel. I'm just cutting this piece straight and cleaning the edge. And then just a little check if this piece is wide enough for my finger. Then I proceed by straightening the bottom edge. This leather I'm using here seems to have rather hard plastic coating, so it's not too easy to cut. Then it's time to move on to cut the other piece. As my finger is quite narrow, I see that I can use this smaller piece instead. I trace the shape on the leather using Taylor's chalk. Now I can continue cutting. This round shape here, however, seems to be quite hard to cut. The shiny coating, despite my best efforts, still seems to be intact. I'm trying to cut it from the other side. And well, as you can see, it's still not working very fast. And finally, it's coming out. Here I'm just cutting the few excess strands of leather using scissors. Finally, all the pieces are cut and ready and almost the same size. Now I use a close pin to pin the pieces together. This makes it easier to see if your pieces are not matching. Now I will use my stitching scissors to make holes to hand sew this together. However, if you remember that plastic coating I had some trouble cutting through. This thing is no exception. These scissors do not seem to be sharp enough to cut through this coating. I also don't want to destroy my kitchen table, so I have to limit the hammering strength I use. It is time for plan B, where I will use my awl to make the holes one by one. As you can see, this works. I then proceed to hammer holes all the way around. The holes go all the way through both feet. Then it's time to get sewing. 
For this step you will need two needles as this will be a saddle stitch. I use a strong cotton thread. Then I get some piece wax and run the thread twice through the wax so it will become stronger and will not break while I stitch. Next, I thread my needle and secure it with a knot. I then do the same thing for the other needle. Now I put my needle through the first hole and make sure that the lengths are equal. Then I put the right hand side needle from my right side through the second hole. I only put it halfway through because now I will put the left hand side needle through the left side. Now your needle should form X shape. Then you can proceed to pull them all the way through. Make sure to pull the thread real tight. Now all you have to do is to repeat this saddle stitch all the way until you are done. If you notice that the needles are not going through the hole easily, you can use the awl again to make the holes a little bit bigger. And now, thanks to the editing magic, this is the last stitch. And now you can secure the thread by making several knots. To make the ending less visible, I guide the thread through the last stitch.
I then proceed by making three knots and cutting the excess off. Yay, it's done. Then it's time to burnish the edges. I start by sandpapering them until they are somewhat smooth. Then I use some water to wet the edges. After this I take my block of wood and begin to burnish the leather. When you hear kinda like a squeaking sound and feel the leather is catching the wood, then you know the edge is burnished and ready. Because my leather was strong tan, there is this blue color at the edges, so I just use my marker to stain them. Well, if you are as careful as me, you can also paint your hand while you are at it. And now it's all done and you're gonna watch this very fancy montage of this very professional masterpiece. <laughs>